Eric wandered slowly down the street, wrapped in a thin jacket that was completely unseasonable for him. Autumn had long ago taken its toll. The remaining colourful leaves were flying off the trees and slowly falling to the ground. Eric was freezing cold, but he could not buy a new jacket. He had not yet found a job, and he was ashamed to ask his mother for a loan. He was supposed to help her not take money from a woman who had already invested a lot in him, hoping that her son would achieve a lot in life. Eric thought about the job interview. He was returning from so late. It didn't seem to go as badly as usual this time. At least they had promised to call him back, even if it was only a ghostly hope. But in all the other cases, he had been rejected as soon as they found out about his criminal record and probation. No one even tried to find out what exactly Eric had been convicted of. They just refused him right away. The neighbourhood through which Eric often cut his way from the bus stop was mostly inhabited by rich people. Everything around just shouted about it. Numerous flower beds, well-groomed streets, luxurious white brick houses with huge glazed lodges. It was just a delightful neighbourhood, and Eric used to often dream that one day he too would be able to live in a house like that. Even though so far all the circumstances were against him, Eric told himself that he would definitely get what he wanted, and after the black period in his life, there would definitely be a white one. Suddenly, someone's soft cry of entreaty interrupted his musings. Eric looked closely in the direction of the sound and noticed an expensive black car, near which there were several guys. After a second, Eric realised that one of them was trying to push the desperately resisting girl into a car. Having told himself that it was none of his business, Eric went on, deciding that most likely it was the girl's own fault, and she provoked this attitude towards herself. But no matter how hard Eric tried to distance himself from what was happening, his heart was still out of place and his blood began to boil with righteous anger. He wanted to save this foolish girl, but he strongly dissuaded himself from doing so. He had had enough heroic deeds in his life, especially the last one. He should have thought of his mother first. Everybody had their own life. Wasn't there anyone else around to help the girl? There must be guards in the neighbourhood. Pulling his hood over his head to shield himself from the scene he'd witnessed, Eric sped up, but the girl's voice suddenly stabbed at his eardrums, a desperate plea for help, as if a steel hand grabbed the guy and turned him back. With a hurried step, Eric headed toward the car, thinking that if he walked by and then found out from the news about another rape or murder, he would never forgive himself. Let the girl go immediately, said Eric softly, taking his cold hands out of his pockets and clenching them into a fist until they crunched. Who are you? Get out of here. The girl doesn't mind, so stay out of here where you're not asked, threw one of the guys angrily. Please help me, sobbed the girl, and the one holding her slapped her on the cheek and ordered her to be quiet. Terrified with no hope of rescue, the girl looked pitifully at her possible saviour. Of course, Eric could simply turn around and leave, but who else would help her? He was determined that he would help her, no matter what it cost him, especially since the guys in the car looked like they could only boast of expensive clothes than a car, not strength. A fight started. Realising that they were giving up their positions, the guys in the car began to retreat like cowardly jackals. Eric took the girl by the hand and quickly led from the attackers away. Where do you need to go? Should I call a cab? asked Eric. The girl cried and shook her head negatively, pointing with a shaky hand towards one of the high-rise buildings built right behind the mansion district. 
Eric decided that she lived there and walked her to the entrance. On his way home, Eric tried to cover his tracks because the best option for him was to remain unnoticed. Once home, he quickly hid in his room so his mother would not be nervous unnecessarily at the sight of the abrasions on his hands and face. Of course, she would not reprimand him for this action, but she would then be afraid of every knock on the door, every phone call. Throwing off his outer clothes and cleaning his face, Eric climbed under the blanket and tried to disconnect from all his worries. It took him a while, but he managed to fall asleep. And in the morning, he was awakened by a loud ringing of the doorbell. Eric rubbed his eyes, put on his home shorts and went out of the room. There was another man in the corridor besides his mother, and Eric felt as if he had been given an electric shock when he looked at him. It was the policeman, and that meant only one thing. His last night's adventures were not a secret. Did you decide to play Robin Hood? Do you want to do heroic deeds again? Eric, do you even realize what's coming at you now? You just got out on parole. Last time I tried to help, but this time I won't even try. It's useless. You don't even know who you have crossed. What a hero. You beat up the son of one of the most powerful men in town. I asked you to be careful. But you? The policeman sighed and shook his head, and Eric realized doomfully that now he would have to pay the full price. Is it really that hopeless? How did you find me? Didn't you know that there were many cameras in that neighborhood? We got a good look at you, from all sides, and even the way you beat their faces with pleasure, we could see it too. And the way they tried to force a woman into the car, did you see that? Eric was indignant. If you watched the cameras, you should have seen it from the beginning. Unfortunately, there was some interference appeared at that moment. You know what I mean? Powerful people you crossed, son. Eric glanced at his crying mother. He wanted to wipe the tears from her cheeks and tell her everything would be all right. But he couldn't lie to her, or to himself. Because if he got out early once for good behaviour, now, as the officer had said, he would be punished very severely for a repeat of the same violation. Mum, I'm sorry, but I couldn't get past the young woman in trouble, was the only thing Eric got to say to justify himself. The policeman reluctantly handcuffed Eric's wrists and led him to his car, which was already waiting for him near the entrance. Eric got out of the car as soon as he reached the police station. When he noticed a familiar black car nearby, he got angry, and when the rich guys with taped noses and bandaged hands got out, he felt the desire to hit them a couple of times more to consolidate the result. They had the impudence to come and complain about him. Eric did not understand how such people can live on earth. So what? You thought you'd get away with it? Now you're going to rot in jail, said the most impertinent one, who tried to push the girl into the car. Okay, but you're already rotten inside, replied Eric quietly to him and continued on his way. After completing all the formalities that are carried out upon entering the station, Eric was immediately told that the trial would take place quickly, since a powerful man had written a complaint against him. The policemen turned out to be pretty good guys. They sympathised with Eric and told him in confidence that if it were up to them, they would release him right away. Sitting behind bars, Eric laughed at the irony of fate. In fact, it was all over again, only now some variables were a little different. The last time he had defended an elderly homeless man who was being bullied by a bunch of drunken guys. Eric didn't even think at the time that they would dare report him to the police. They paid the homeless man and he witnessed against his saviour without the slightest shred of conscience. Moreover, he told everything so colourfully that Eric himself 
almost believed that he had actually attacked a group of men for no reason. Eric was then charged with assault and battery and aggression and was put in jail. Sighing heavily, Eric took his mind off the thoughts of the past and thought about his future, which for the next few years was now a foregone conclusion. It was nothing. He could definitely come back. He would definitely find a job. Maybe he would meet a kind and responsive girl, create a family with her, and try not to get involved in such troubles again. Only, such dreams helped Eric to live on and not to give up. He did not communicate with his cellmates because all of them, unlike him, were here for a crime. Someone had committed theft, someone had committed robbery. Although everyone, of course, had his own version of events. The next morning, a policeman entered the cell and ordered Eric to come out. But to his great surprise, the officer did not handcuff him, but led him straight to the exit. What happened? asked the man excitedly to the officers, escorting him. Oh, yeah, you don't know. We're releasing you. Consider that there was no detention, and take my advice. Just stay away from all this mess next time, and if you see it again, call us right away. Stop acting like a superhero. Eric walked out of the police station completely stunned, and he was already waited by some people outside. The same hooligan and a man, most likely his influential father, were standing by the black car. Eric grimaced and thought that if he was made to ask him for forgiveness, he would never do that. He would rather spit, and it did not matter that after that he would certainly go to jail. A little away from them, Eric noticed the very young woman he had saved, and a grey-haired man in a business suit was standing next to her. The man seemed very stern at first glance. Eric didn't know what to expect, but the girl saw him and dragged the grey-haired man behind her toward Eric. Dad, this is the man who saved me. Meet him, but I never got his name. Eric, the guy shrugged. And I'm Mr. Hall. You saved my daughter. I'd be happy to teach that jerk a lesson, but I'm counting on his father to punish him himself. Thank you very much, the grey-haired man said and shook Eric's hand. You know, this Simon? Mr. Hall nodded toward the girl's abuser. He's been courting Teresa for a long time. He kept trying to charm her. They dated for a while, but broke up pretty quickly. But it seemed that Simon did not like the fact that she dumped him, and he probably wanted revenge. In general, I talked to his father thoroughly. No one else will hurt you. There will be no punishment for you. You should be rewarded, not punished. What do you want? I didn't save the girl for a reward. You got me out of jail and that's it. Thank you, Eric shrugged. Well, no, it's not going to be like that. You'd better think hard about what you want, and then call me and tell me. Eric stared intently into Mr. Hall's face, and when he realised who the man standing in front of him was, he could not believe his own eyes. Are you really our mayor? Well, yes, and I thought you recognised me right away. That's why you're embarrassed. So, what do you want? I just wish I could find a job but people refused to even consider me because of my criminal record when I was in a similar situation. Well, we'll find you a job, so here's a card with my personal number on it. When you come to your senses, call me. Thank you, Eric thanked him embarrassedly. Teresa kept a modest distance and Eric could not understand how such a girl could date a guy like Simon. Mr. Hall, meanwhile, threw a menacing glance in the direction of his daughter's abuser, and he reluctantly approached them with his father. Speak up, the man said sternly to Simon. I'm sorry about that. My buddies and I didn't mean any harm. It was just a joke, and she didn't get it. Eric looked at the guy, who was absolutely unrepentant, and turned away as if he was nothing. Dad, you see for yourself, I've apologised and he won't make contact whined Simon as his father looked up at him menacingly. 
Shut up. We'll talk about everything at home, his father grumbled. No, you can't do that at home. You understand, an attempt was made on my daughter, and also slander on the guy. The case will go further, and the police already want to question Simon and his friends, Mr. Hall said dryly. Simon went pink and sat like a beaten dog, but his father remained coldly silent, understanding that any arguments could be disastrous for his reputation and the future of his company. Eric, meanwhile, said goodbye to Mr. Hall and Teresa, thanked them once again for getting him out of the police and hurried home. He had never been happier, because in this case justice had finally been served and the guilty would definitely be punished. Although he had almost ended up behind bars, Eric still felt like a true hero and had no plans to stop doing good deeds. He believed there was a boomerang of fate, and if someone close to him were in a similar situation, they would surely be helped. When he came home, Eric immediately fell into the arms of his stunned mother. She had been crying for a long time, hugging her son, telling him that he should think first of all about himself and his family, and then she looked at him and smiled and said she was madly proud of him. The next day, Eric called Mr. Hall, and in the evening, he had an interview and got his dream job with good pay and a great boss. <laughs>